follow this channel, you know that science is progressing at a faster and faster clip every single year, and 2018 looks to be no exception. So hold on to your butts, because here are 11 science stories you're going to want to watch out for in 2018. The first launch of the Falcon Heavy. Right now, as we speak, the Falcon Heavy is on the launch pad at 39A, I believe, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is amazing. The Falcon Heavy is basically three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together with 27 engines to launch stuff into the out of space area. I could list off a whole bunch of numbers, but suffice to say, this is gonna be the most powerful rocket in the world. So that's super crazy. So we've actually gotten used to uh, SpaceX landing their rockets vertically after takeoff, which is amazing thing that we've actually gotten used to that. That's a wonder of technology. But what's gonna be really crazy about the Falcon Heavy is there's three cores and they're all gonna be landing almost simultaneously. At least two are on launch pads and the third will be landing on a drone ship. Now the first launch is just a test run, but of course Elon had to make it more fun. So what he is actually doing is he is actually launching his first Tesla Roadster into outer space with a trajectory that's gonna take it to Mars. Like he, he talked about this on Twitter a while back and I thought it was just a joke. In fact, at one point I thought he said he was just kidding, but no, there are pictures of the Tesla Roadster in the fairing of the rocket. They're actually launching this thing in outer space. Anyway, a static test is scheduled for this Saturday on the 6th, that could change, but that's when it's scheduled for. And sometime this month it's gonna launch. I'm gonna be talking about this further in a video coming up soon, so keep an eye out for that. Several missions to the moon. So we are definitely going back to the moon in 2018. Three different countries have missions planned to launch and land on the moon this year. India is launching the Trandoshan 2 mission, which will be the very first time they've ever landed on the moon. This is from the India Space Research Organization, or ISRO. It's gonna consist of an orbiter, a lander, and then a little rover that comes off of the lander and explores the surface. The orbiter is gonna fly around and make 3D maps of the surface while the, the rover and the lander uh, do some tests on the crust and the mantle of the moon. The Japanese space agency JAXA is sending their first probe to the moon. It's gonna be called the Smart Lander for Investigating the Moon, or SLIM. And China will be landing on the moon with the Chang-4 mission. I think I'm saying that right? Probably not. They actually landed on the moon once before with the Chang-3 mission, but this is actually going to uh, be a first internationally. They're gonna land on the far side of the moon. Nobody's ever done that before. And the reason for doing that is they wanna actually do radio astronomy from that side of the moon, where the moon is blocking off all interference of radio signals coming from Earth, which is pretty cool. A mission to Mercury. The European Space Agency, or ESA, is launching the Bepi Colombo mission to Mercury this year. This is actually a joint mission with JAXA, the Japanese agency, and it's not gonna actually arrive there until 2025. And it consists of the Mercury Planet Orbiter and the Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter. Some of the goals are to measure the magnetic field and figure out where that comes from, and also to see if they can find more deposits of polar ice, which the Messenger probe actually found a few years ago. TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. I talked previously in an exoplanet video about how we find exoplanets using the transit method. This has been super successful using the Kepler Space uh, Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope. The cool thing about TESS is it's a wide angle look at the entire sky. It's literally going to scan an entire sphere around the Earth over two years, and it's going to spend 27 days in each section and measure uh, over 200,000 different stars to see if there's any kind of dimming that could signal for planets. Scientists expect to find at least 2,000 planets using this method and probably 300 Earth-like planets. So it's gonna be a big couple of years for exoplanet exploration. The Parker Solar Probe. We are gonna fly a probe to the sun. Not to look at the sun, to the sun. It's gonna use flybys of Venus over seven years to get to within 3.9 million kilometers from the surface of the sun, which is in the sun's atmosphere. At this distance, it's gonna endure temperatures up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,300 degrees Celsius. They've actually had this plan for a really long time, but it took a while for us to figure out how to keep it from melting at that temperature. Uh, but they got it figured out and it's launching this year. They hope to learn more about the solar wind and actually find out what causes charged particles to accelerate through the sun's corona. CRISPR trials begin in humans. So I've talked about CRISPR-Cas9 in a previous video, and ever since it was first kind of discovered in 2014, there's been a lot of promise associated with it, but not very many actual human trials. That's gonna change this year. There was a bit of a race going on between China and the United States, and China kind of jumped in there and did some, uh, some tests on lung cancer patients, but we don't know what the results of that have been yet. But trials are gonna begin in the United States and in the EU on sickle cell anemia and major beta thalassemia, which are both blood 
blood uh, conditions. And there's also a trial of HBV on the way. With any luck, these will be successful and they'll start using these kinds of techniques for all kinds of other things. This could literally change medicine as we know it. The NASA InSight Mars mission. NASA is launching a Mars mission called the InSight Lander that's going to give us a better picture of how terrestrial planets form. What it's going to do after it lands is it's actually going to pound the ground with sort of like a hammer implement and then use echolocation to create sort of a map of underneath the surface. It's going to be pretty cool. We will know what is deep inside Mars. Possible vaccine for type 1 diabetes will begin human trials. Okay, so this doesn't actually cure diabetes, but it does prevent a virus that causes it. So scientists at a university in Finland actually associated diabetes with a certain type of virus that I'm gonna put right here because I can't pronounce it. And what it does is it actually attacks the pancreas and you know messes with your body's insulin production, which creates diabetes. So with any luck, this vaccine could actually help prevent diabetes. That's really cool. Scientists will drill into the Earth's mantle for the first time. So there's a drill ship from a Japanese agency called Chikyu, and their plan is to drill over 3.9 kilometers into the crust of the Earth at certain places to reach the mantle. They do have a couple of places in mind. Uh, Hawaii is one of them, Iceland is another one. These are obviously places where the mantle rises high. It's very volcanic, so it's much less crust to go through. But this has never been done before. They want to learn more about the boundary between the mantle and the crust to see how geologically all that works out. And they also want to see what the possibility is of life down there. We're always looking for more extremophile life. And if they found some near the mantle, that would be kind of crazy. They plan to start drilling this year, but they probably won't reach the mantle until nearly 2030. So this is a very long-term project. Sales of EVs will skyrocket. There's not just one, but three different long range, relatively inexpensive electric vehicles entering the market this year. There's the Tesla Model 3, the Chevy Bolt, and the Nissan Leaf second generation. What this means is that 2018 might be the year where electric vehicles stop being a niche product and become much more mainstream. The Consumer Federation of America predicts that EV sales will double this year. Now they only make up a small percentage of the market right now, just a few percentage points, but you gotta start somewhere, and if it continues to double throughout the years, we got an exponential curve going. As prices of these cars continue to drop and more and more people see them out on the road, they're gonna kind of take away a little bit of whatever stigma there might be about them. People are gonna feel a lot more comfortable with them and they're gonna start buying them more. So this might be the year when this all really kind of starts to happen. That's really exciting. And OSIRIS-REx will reach the asteroid Bennu. I actually talked about this a few years ago. It launched in 2016. So the reason OSIRIS-REx is one of the coolest satellites out there right now is not just because it's got an awesome name, but because it's actually going to retrieve dust and samples from an asteroid and return it to Earth. This has never been done before. The asteroid in question is called Bennu, and they took particular interest in it because it looks like in maybe a couple hundred years, it could come kind of close to, you know, hitting Earth and annihilating everybody. Not likely, but it does cross Earth's orbit, so it could happen someday. Now, the Rosetta mission landed on a comet a few years ago, which was amazing in and of itself but it didn't really come back to us. This one is actually gonna come back. We're gonna actually have samples from an asteroid, which is huge because asteroids were kind of part of the building of the solar system. So we're gonna get a picture of what the early life of the solar system was all about, and that's, that's amazing. But even more amazing, this ability to go out to an asteroid and retrieve stuff and bring it back might be the precursor to asteroid mining which could be a huge game changer sometime in the next few decades. Now there's obviously a lot more to talk about, including some anti-aging therapies that are gonna be hitting the market this year and a male birth control pill. That's apparently going to be on the market. So uh, if there's anything I missed, talk about it in the comments. I would love to hear what you're most excited about this year. And by the way, if you're wondering why I'm posting something like this on a Thursday, it's because I'm kind of trying something new for 2018. I'm gonna try to post multiple times a week and right now what I'm calling my Thursday posts, I'm calling them random Thursdays. It might not necessarily be on the science topics that I normally talk about. This one was, but it could be on any kind of topic. We'll see which ones you guys like the best. I'm hoping to have a little bit of fun with it, so keep that in mind. Thursday, you're gonna be starting to see some videos from me out here, among some other things. I'm gonna to try to do some more live streaming and whatnot, but uh, you're gonna you're gonna see some more Joe. Hopefully that's a good thing. Remember, shirts are available at theanswerswithjoe.com slash shirts store. 
Uh, you can get this one, which has always been a favorite of mine, but this video happened to talk quite a bit about space, so I was gonna highlight this particular design that says, I need my space, kind of fun. There's these and literally dozens more designs at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Go check it out. And this video is brought to you by cankerboy.com. If you get regular canker sores and mouth ulcers, you don't have to live in pain. Just uh, go to cankerboy.com, you can get this daily pill. You get a two month supply and uh, it should work in six to eight weeks. Most people, it helps them and uh, it could help you. So give it a try, cankerboy.com. Please like and share if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, I invite you to subscribe because I talk about all kinds of science stuff on Mondays and now whatever on Thursdays. And you might like it too. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week and I will see you on Monday. Love you guys, take care.